Remember this thing? You don't? No problem. Back when Covid struck for the very first time, the business at university stopped uh, universitating. No lectures, no lessons, nothing. And um, I didn't have my car yet, I didn't know anybody with an old car, so I had plenty of time on my hands to build a steam engine. And that I did. Built the steam engine, painted it, nickel plated it, assembled it, done. Built the boiler, bent everything nicely, soldered everything together. It just needed nickel plating and bluing and a final soldering and assembly. And then something happened in my life and the project never got finished. So let's get it done once and for all today. Here is where all the stuff's been sitting. Here is the boiler. Let's get all this out of here and uh, take care of it. Here is all the stuff we're going to need. Haven't opened these in a while. Oh, I didn't recall it being that bad. <laughs> but we'll figure out what goes where eventually. Maybe. Somehow. Time lapse. Well, today is tomorrow. The silicon has dried and I'm now taking the time to remove all the ugly remnants that have squeezed out the sides here. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm saying pretty happy because the uh, bluing on the steel in contrast with the Chrome plating just looks absolute gangster. I'm very, very happy with that result. However, the bluing on the copper, uh, something must have gone wrong or, you know, the preparation wasn't the right because I oiled this down 
and I wiped some of the bluing clean off the thing. It doesn't, it didn't turn out the way I had hoped to and it's not as stable as I hoped. Um, but to be honest, I'm just going to have to rock and roll with that. Um, I'm not going to be able to improve that result any and um, you know, I'm just going to write it off as being patina and um, well, everybody's going to have to accept that because it is my choice and my steam engine. Well, I'm currently mounting the last foot onto the base plate here. So now everything is ready to marry the boiler to the engine to the base plate. So let's go upstairs and go grab that. Well, there it is. Looks mighty fine, doesn't it? Um, I've quickly painted the wooden handles black and gave them a clear coating, so they are waiting to dry now. I thought I was going to paint the inlays in the fire door black. However, I'm pretty sure that once this all gets hot, the black color will just disappear. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I've air tested it. I'm not even going to show it. That's not what you're here for. We're going to steam this baby up. The clock seems to love the idea too. Um, I'm pretty sure that once we've uh, filled the boiler and the burner up and lit everything up, we're going to discover that the tank for this thing is just way too small, especially to power three burners. Um, the burner is going to be too small to produce any significant amount of steam and this thing is going to leak everywhere. Do I care? No. This is my second steam engine. This is what number one looked like. And if my learning curve, you know, seems to be like that, then there is not much to improve on the next steam engine. I have already made plans for the next one, so, um, you know, I'm going to leave it the way it is and accept that it is steam engine number two and there are flaws with it and I'm going to try and improve on those flaws next time round. Now I've had you waiting long enough, let's power this bad boy up.
Was hast du? Nö. Jetzt gibt es aber auch gleich ein Burnout und gleich fliegen uns die Pleuse um die Ohren.
All right, I think this project is worthy of a conclusion. I would have thought this thing would leak a lot more. We saw one or two pinholes here at the steam dome. The machine itself was fine. I would have expected way worse on this, especially the solder joints I did here with you know all the valve chests and cylinder combined. It all did fine and the machine ran superb. It did knock, it didn't scream or anything which partway is down to the very low pressure, of course, we had this thing operating at, which I blame the burner for. And I think I even said it when I built this thing, is that it's just way too small uh, to, you know, power this big thing. Despite having three vaporizers, the tank is just not enough for this. It's going to heat up in no time, the spirits expand, it overflows and it, you know, causes uh, catastrophic mayhem, as you saw in that video there. Um, I ended up eliminating the center vaporizer, plugging it up, and then powering it with diluted spirits, which I mixed 30% of water into. That seemed to do the trick. However, then of course the firepower was just way down, and it was enough to you know make the machine run, but it wasn't all too vigorous. So, in the future, I guess, this will be more of a display piece and I'm going to run this on, say, barbecue paste, for example, which will just provide a much larger surface area, but a much more controlled flame at the same time. I think, after two years, I can happily now call this project finished. I'm going to touch up those here little leaks. And then it's on to the next project. I already have the models and the uh, drawings for a doll 512 waiting to be realized, self-made obviously. Before I do that, however, I'm going to start on an old request from a good friend of mine who wanted a sawmill in 1 to 14 scale um, for his garden railway model diorama. And that's what we're going to do next. Probably the car engine before that, but uh, just so you have an idea what's going to await you in the coming weeks, months, years on this channel. With that being said, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, and I know I'm late, but Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to y'all.